Hello and welcome back to the mini hack solved series. In this episode, we'll solve Salesforce flow hack. We'll see how to add product to multiple opportunities using screen flows. We'll leverage the features that works with collections like data tables and choice lookups. We'll also use get records, variables, loops, and assignments to solve this hack. If you haven't watched earlier episodes, let me tell you that mini hacks is one of the most popular areas both at Dreamforce and Trailblazer DX, where people come to the hack zone, sit and solve the hack. The hack specifies what to do, but not how to do it. It also specifies the features to be used while you solve it. So let's go ahead and check today's hack. Whenever Universal Containers launches a new product, they promote it by adding it as a complementary offering to its existing opportunities. Currently, sales reps add the product manually to multiple relevant opportunities. This can be time consuming. As an admin, your task is to simplify this process. We can solve this by using the flows with the latest features. You can also see that we have a pre-work to do before creating the flow. We need to activate the standard price book. It also shows hint that we might have to create a new list view to see all the price books. If you are wondering why we need to activate the price book to create the products, you can refer the guidelines for creating the products in the sales cloud documentation. I'll share the link in the description below. Okay, let's now go and activate the price book. You can access price books from the app launcher. Here we can see only a recently viewed list with no price books in it because we did not open any price books so far. Let's follow the hint and create a new list view. Let's call it all price books and save it. Now you can see that it lists standard and standard price books. Let's activate the standard price book. The next step is to add a few products and assign the standard price. Let's add a computer and mark it active. As a best practice, you can add a product code and assign it to a product family. But for demo purposes, we'll leave it empty. Click save. Now in the related tab, click this button and add the standard price. Similarly, we'll also add a mouse. You can add more products if you wish to. We'll now create a few opportunities with different stages and assign the standard price book to these opportunities. Let's call it Burlington Textiles Computers. Select the account. Select the closing date. Select a stage. And save it. In the related list, you can see the products. Click the button and choose price book. Let's choose the standard price book and save it. Similarly, we can create a couple more opportunities or we can choose the standard price book for the existing opportunities as well. Now we are done with the pre work. So let's go and check the requirements. Let's see the first set of requirements. We should create a screen flow where the first screen shows the list of opportunities in the data table. We should show the opportunity name, account name, stage and amount in the columns of the table. Okay, then the opportunities shown should not be in the closed one or closed loss stage. And also the sales rep must be able to select more than one opportunity from the table. Okay, with these requirements in mind, let's go back to the org and complete this set of requirements. In the setup, 
I'll search for flows and select flows. Let's click new flow. We'll select the screen flow and create. The first step is to create a screen with the data table. But before creating the data table, I want to be sure that I have the list of opportunities to configure the data table source. I can use get records to do that. So let's add the element get records. Let's give a name, get open opportunities and select opportunity object. If you remember from the requirements, the opportunities should not be in the closed one or closed loss stage. So let's add the conditions. Stage name does not equal closed one. And stage name does not equal closed loss stage. For how many records, we'll select all records and save it. Let's give a flow label. Add a product to multiple opportunities and save it. Now we can add the data table for which we will add the screen element. Let's give a name opportunity data table screen. Let's remove the header. We can leverage the data table name for the header. Let's remove the pause and previous buttons as we will not be using those. We will use the custom label for the next button. Now let's add the data table component to the screen. Let's give the API name opportunity data table. Let's give the label opportunity list. Let's select use the label as the table title. For the source collection, we can select the output of the get records action. For configuring rows, we'll make sure multiple row selection mode is selected. Now, for configuring columns, we'll choose the fields that were mentioned in the requirements. We'll select the opportunity name, account, stage, and amount. We'll use the opportunity name as the custom label. We'll use account ID as custom label. We'll use the stage as the custom label. And we'll use the amount as it is. Let's click done. Let's save and debug and see how it works. You can see that it shows the opportunities which are not in the closed one or closed loss stage. We can select multiple records. We can click next, but nothing happens. Let's go and check the requirements to see what we should do with the selected records. The next requirement is to create a screen that shows the active products in the org. Once product is selected, it has to be added to each of the opportunities that we selected in the previous screen. We can use choice lookup to show the list of active products. Okay, let's go back to the flow. To display a list of products in the choice lookup, let's first create a resource of type record choice set. Let's give an API name list of products. Let's select the product object. We want only active product. So let's select is active condition equals true. We can choose each product by its name. So let's select the name field as the choice label, text as data type, and product ID as the value. Let's click done. Now we can create a screen for choice lookup. So let's create a screen and call it opportunity product screen. Let's configure the header and remove the show header. Let's configure the footer and remove the pause button. Now let's add a choice lookup.
give it a name say product list to configure choices we'll use the record set that we just created click done and save let's once again debug and see how it works let's search for computers and there it is so far so good let's go back and check the requirements once again once a product is selected it has to be added to each of the selected opportunities we can do this by creating a record of the type of opportunity product for each of the selected opportunities if you are not aware of the object opportunity product then you can consider it as an opportunity line item we can finally insert these opportunity product records in the list there is also a hint to use the loop element to create a collection of records and then insert that collection into the database outside the loop okay let's start by creating a loop element let's give the label loop over selected opportunities for collection variables let's choose the selected rows from the data table click done let's now create a variable to store the collection of opportunity product records open the toolbox and click new resource select variable and give the api name list of opportunity products let's select data type record one important point to note is we need to select allow multiple values as it's going to store a collection let's select the object opportunity product you can also notice there it shows opportunity line item click done we'll create one more variable to store the value of a single opportunity product to add it to the collection that we just created let's give the api name single opportunity product let's select data type record let's select the object opportunity product and click done now we'll add the logic in the loop let's create one assignment element that sets the values of the single opportunity product variable based on the opportunity in the current iteration let's give a label new opportunity line item now let's set the values of the properties of the single opportunity product set the id to equal the selected choice value from the product list set the opportunity id from the current item from the loop If you go back to the requirements once the final requirement is that the product is complementary and the final price must be zero also the quantity must be one for each opportunity product so let's set the total price to zero and the quantity to one we are now done with the assignment now we have the opportunity product for the current iteration let's add it to the list of opportunity products so that we can insert all at once later so let's create another assignment in the loop give the api name add to list let's select list of opportunity products select the add operator select single opportunity product and click done now we have the collection of opportunity product records let's create salesforce records using this collection after last let's add the create records element let's give a name say insert opportunity line items for how many records to create let's select multiple for record collection choose list of opportunity products save it let's debug one last time and see how it works let's select a couple of opportunities 
select a product from the product list and click next. You can see that it has successfully run. Let's go and check if the product got added to the selected opportunities. There you go. It has successfully added the product. With that, we have completed the hack. In this video, we saw how to use data tables. We also saw how to create and use choice lookups. There can be more than one solution for this hack. If you find a better solution, please let us know in the comment section below. Also, let us know your thoughts on the content that is delivered on Salesforce Developers YouTube channel. If you like this video, click the like button and also click subscribe to get notifications of any videos that are being added to the Salesforce Developers channel. Thank you for watching this video.